I heard that. I heard that. Mm-hmm. Praise God. Thank you, Minister Killings. Thank you, Minister Patton. Thank you, best congregation in all the United States of America and around the world. Glory be to God. It's good to be with you today. Pray that you're just as excited as I am. If not even more, I wouldn't limit your excitement if it's for the things of God, for what he's doing in the earth. And you're one of his chosen earthen vessels fit for the master's use, that he may have free reign and free rule in your life to order your steps, direct your path, and guide you with this eye into what is his good and acceptable and perfect will. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because that's what really matters. Nothing else matters. That's the only thing that matters. Because when it's all said and done and we stand before the sun, he's going to look at us and say, well done. Come on, on. preach it with me. Glory be to God. Because we fulfill the hope of his calling. We answered the call with diligence. We answered the call with zeal and enthusiasm. Excuse me. Jesus said, I might need my mask, huh? Zeal for my father's house has eaten me up. We used to sing a song. The zeal of God has consumed me. It burns within my soul. A driving force that cannot be stopped. A fire that cannot be quenched. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, oh hallelujah, hallelujah, holly, holly, hallelujah. Yeah, passionate about the things of God, hungry and thirsty for his presence. You may be seated. Father, thank you for this privilege and opportunity to break the word of life with your sons and daughters that are in this place, as well as those who are online. And if you're out there online, shout amen. Hallelujah. I know you had a blessed time during praise and worship. And if you were here for prayer and intercession, when we came in, it was lively. When we came in, it was active. When we came in, you know, if, you, if you've ever been to those places like where there's hazardous conditions and all, and they have these signs that said, you know, hazardous. Active material. Anybody seen something like that before? I hope I'm not making anything up. It's coming up in my spirit, but I'm just going to speak it. And this is what we came into today. Lively, active individuals excited about the things of God. Elder Finn was up here praying and interceding, and he just led in praise for about the last five or ten minutes, and it didn't even get, uh, um, like, do something else or do it, it was like it just kept going higher, it kept elevating. I think I clapped my hands for about 10 minutes long, not complaining, but just caught up in the atmosphere that was established. Because Wednesday night, when we came in, there was a heaviness in the congregation. I don't know if it was up here on the platform, but I know it was there. And it was so thick that it was difficult to breathe and I didn't have a mask on. But I recognized the spirit that was trying to suppress us. And it's like, deal with that thing. And by the time I got to the platform and dealt with that thing, it cleared up. Blessed be the name of the Lord. It cleared up. Because we are the people of God. We have the power and the authority. I like the way Pastor Ross says it. We have the authority to direct divine activity in the earth. And so if the adversary is acting up, or if the climate and the atmosphere is not where it should be, we have the authority to change that. We have the power to change that. We can do it within ourselves first. And prayerfully, that's enough to stir up others that are around us. We come in hot and on fire, and we let that fire just spread. We are coals, coals at the altar of the Lord. And we come together, and we let that heat just spread and take over the place and consume any ungodly thing that would dare try to interfere, limit, prohibit the Spirit of God from having his way. 
Listen to what the prophet Habakkuk had to say. A prayer. Everybody say a prayer. A prayer of petitioning God. He says, a prayer of Habakkuk the prophet set to wild, enthusiastic, and triumphal music. That is how we should roll in when we roll in. That is how we should offer up the sacrifice of praise. Even when we are praying, that there's some excitement even in our praying as well. Glory be to God. And so today the atmosphere was different from Wednesday. I pray that you recognize it as well and that you settle for nothing less than what took place today. We have the ability. We are not like athletes. We are not like those who are in their youth. But even the youth will get weak. Even the youth will faint. But it's they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength, shall mount up with wings as eagles, shall run and not be weary, shall walk and shall not faint. Therefore, if that's what's happening with the righteous, we never have to have a dead or low-level service. We never have to come together and be all miserable. Somebody might be getting attacked, but we come together with intercession to break that attack, to set a wall of fire around them in order to buffet the enemy as he's trying to buffet them. We ought to be able to stir things up so that people know that God is in our midst. Hallelujah. Not sadness, sorrow, and depression or discouragement, but the joy of the Lord, which is our strength, just manifests over and over and over and over. It does not have to run out because God does not run out. It does not have to run low because God is not low. He's on high. Come up to where he is in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. And all that little hit of the pandemic that hit this place it only made us stronger and more determined for many of us, I'll say, if not all of us. Glory be to God. I remember sharing Wednesday night, and I just want to cover this and move on to today, that um, I was talking about this, the panel that they had of the, the, the NIH, I believe it was, the CDC, and uh, I don't think they had anybody from WHO organization but they have one from health, Human Health Services, and then I think there was another person there. And this was the funny thing. It was a strange thing. I didn't catch it at first, but as I listened to commentators afterwards, I got what they were saying. Because all of them sat there with masks on their face. But when it came time to talk, you had one who was over the CDC. She's double-masked. You had two, uh, three others that were single-masked. All of the ones that were single and the devil one, with the exception of one, when they spoke into the mic, they kept their mask on. When the one, Dr. Fauci, when he was speaking to the mic, he would take his mask off. And so the confusion is, is do we take the mask off? Or do we keep the mask on? Because you're sending a mixed message to the people. This is why people don't trust in what they're telling people to do. We don't trust in taking the vaccine. We don't trust in the mask. We don't trust in those things that they're saying because there's so much contradiction, so much lies and deception, so much control that goes on that it's like, they don't even know what they're talking about. They don't even know what they're doing and they're supposed to be the experts in the field. Right along the lines of that taking place, if not the same day, maybe a few days earlier, you had Senator Ted Cruz who was at the podium and he was commenting on some things and as he's speaking, he's not wearing a mask. So one of the smart liberal media outlets asked him, how come you're not wearing a mask? And Ted Cruz went off on him. Sorry about that. He slam the podium. Why don't you talk to Joe, Joe Biden? Why does he get to talk without a mask? Why does he get away with that? And then you're trying to hold us accountable. Something along that lines, basically that was it. Essentially that was it. But his point was, be consistent with this thing. If you're going to require others to do certain things, you do them yourself. It's just like they tell you to mask up before you go into certain places or mask up now, even when you, 
that's all, whatever that is, and get it out of here. Or even when you're going from place to place, they want you to mask up. And it's like, then you see, and this, of course, was a few weeks back, if not a couple of months back, then you see the mayor of San Francisco, and she's out there in a nightclub, and she's out there dancing, and she's feeling the spirit, and so she's like, she couldn't put that mask on because she was just feeling too good. But they are the very ones that are trying to hold you to account that you mask up, that you practice social distancing, that you wash your hands. And what is the other one? Uh, uh, mask up, social distance, distance, wash your hands. And there's one other one that it escapes me right now. But nevertheless, these are the mandates. And I said to you Wednesday night, what if I tell you that the masks don't work? Because they don't. They don't. If we go back to the original hit of COVID-19 as it hit this place, we were masked up, we were washing our hands, we were keeping social distance, we were wiping things down, we were trying to make sure everything was sanitized, and guess what? Still got hit. But we didn't get knocked out. Hallelujah. 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 So even the second time around, matter of fact, when um, uh, you would have thought that the way they were talking about Delta, that Delta would have hit. But Delta didn't hit. It hit some people, but it didn't hit us. Maybe it knew better. No use in going to that place. These people believe in God. They trust in God. They don't care about what others say or what others think. So let's just leave them alone. But Omicron decided to come on in and visit. And Omicron for many, now I understand it's because of the, the empty, I won't say the empty seat seats, but because of those who should be here that are not here because they're still probably battling Omicron. But Omicron, I gotta tell you, I've had the original and I've got, had Omicron. Omicron is a little midget. It is a little demon that you can just kick out if you decide to or you can just let it run its course. Either way, you're in control. <coughs> Excuse me. So, with that being said, I did want to cover that with you because I don't know if I covered it Wednesday night about the fact you had those that were wearing masks, double masks, single masks, and when they spoke into the microphone, the other four, the other three took theirs off and then the one kept his, no, they, they kept theirs on and the other one kept, uh, took his off. Reason he did is because he's a superstar. I kid you not. He knows his picture is going to go out there and he's going to be on magazines and things like that. So he's a superstar. Okay. A prayer of Habakkuk, the prophet, set to wild, enthusiastic, and triumphal music. Let's be determined for 2022. <laughs> We're going to do some wild, enthusiastic, triumphal music. When we're at home, when we're in the car, wherever we are, when we come together, some wild, enthusiastic, and triumphal music. Because in 2022, it is going to be a great and exceptional year, but it's going to be a year of spiritual warfare. And in spiritual warfare, you cannot afford to be weak. If we look at it in the natural, we look at the life of Joshua. And we look at how God had to come to Joshua and speak to him in Joshua chapter 1. Let's go there real quick. I have some other passages we're going to get to, but let's just go here to Joshua first. Joshua chapter 1 and beginning with verse 1. And it reads as follows. Now, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, do you actually think God had to say that to Joshua? Obviously, he did have to say it, but he didn't have to say it because it was apparent to Joshua that Moses, his spiritual father, had now died. 
And so the transference of power, if you will, the transference of the anointing, the transference of leadership had already been given unto him. But the reality of Moses no longer being there has settled in with Joshua. And now Joshua is more focused in on Moses having died than he is with the vision and the plans and purposes that God had laid out for him. It was something that had already transpired as far as what was going to happen and that the people were to direct their attention and their, 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 um, their allegiance to a new leader now, Joshua. And so God speaks to him and says, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise. Go over this Jordan, thou and all this people, unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel, every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you. As I said unto Moses, from the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites and unto the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your coast. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee nor forsake thee. So God comes in and reassures Joshua that yes, I am with you. Yes, you're the one who's going to lead. Moses is gone. Now it's time for you to get up. It's time for you to rise. Why? Because the work of God continues. Everybody say that to somebody. The work of God continues. It does not stop. That's why it's not about the uh, necessarily, don't misunderstand what I'm about to say, but it's not about the one who's in leadership at the time. Because if they are gone, the work continues. It does not fold up. It is not like today where businesses go out of business because of a lack of clientele, a lack of sales, a lack of people coming in and purchasing their products or utilizing their services. And because they're gaining no income, they have to shut the doors. You got a pandemic. And because of the rules and the regulations, and isn't this something, just parenthetically insert this. Isn't this something that the Supreme Court has rebuked the president and his mandates, but he is still pushing his agenda? This is how wicked and corrupt government has become. And I bring it before you so that I know that you're aware of it because if you don't pay attention during the course of the week, I may interject something just to keep you on pace with what is happening in our nation and also going on around the world. This is a global effort in order to change things to where you have dictators now controlling things and the people are simply their subjects honoring their control over their lives. This is coming to a conclusion of the freedoms and liberties that we have in the United States of America, as I said to you weeks before, where you had this, uh, this young, she was from, um, not Colombia, it might have been Colombia, I forget what country she's from, Dominican Republic, thank you Holy Ghost, she's from the Dominican Republic, and she makes this statement because they're in this restaurant, and they're trying to enjoy their food, but they get thrown out because they're not wearing a mask, they don't have the vaccine and all, and so she said that if the United States comes, I'll just paraphrase, if the United States come under this kind of a rule, this is the last place of freedom. This is the last bastion of hope for all nations. That's why people want to get here. People here think that it's the worst place. People outside think that it's the only place to come to have liberty and freedom and be able to prosper and live and fulfill whatever their desires, hopes, and dreams may be. So if we just let this thing go, this is the direction that it's heading in. But it's a global effort. They just found a weak leader who will give in to what their desires are. China wants to rule and China will rule unless somebody rises up and puts China in check because we're still the most powerful nation, still the most blessed nation. We're blessed that we're powerful, not because of the might of men, not because of the power of men, but because of the power of the Holy Ghost with the church of the living 
serving God, which is the body of Christ. We're all over this world. But if we don't hold fast to the things that God has called us to do, we will succumb and give over to the whims and the desires of this generation and relinquish one of the greatest nations that has lasted in society, in the history of our uh, uh, existence. They say the United States is the oldest nation, if you will, the most prosperous, most powerful. You could say Israel, but Israel has been broken up, then brought back together, broken up, then brought back together, broken up and brought back together. Now they're together. But again, they've got some shaky, flaky leaders as well that want to cooperate with this agenda that is going on. So, again, that might be the title of the message, Minister Patton. The work continues. I don't know if we've used that before, but might as well use it right now for today. So, it doesn't end. It's like every four years we elect a new president. Or one that has already been in office gets reelected, but he can only run for two terms. He can only serve for two terms, and then you're going to get a new administration that comes in. And so he's only there for a certain time, then he has to move on. The United States continues. So we have those who have done great exploits. We have the Peters, the James, the Johns, the Matthews, the Pauls, the Silases, and all who came before us that are written in Scripture. We had those who came behind them, such as Amy and Catherine and Mariah and, and, and William Joseph Seymour and, uh, jo uh, my God, uh, Smith Wigglesworth. I'm trying to put in another name. Smith Wigglesworth. You have the John G. Lakes as well. These were great men and women of God who moved in the power of God in this earth. And so you have them gone, but the work continues. You have the Abraham, Isaacs, and Jacobs, but they're gone, and the work of God continues. It started with Adam and Eve in the garden, but they're gone. They lasted 900-something years, but they're gone, but the work of God continues. And it will continue until the time where all things are settled and done, and God creates a new heaven and a new earth, and we will live in eternity I love that song we were singing about the eternal, the, the, the eternal life, the blessed life. Oh, man, as we were singing that, oh, praise God. The Zoe life, the godly life, life everlasting. Those words just come alive as you're singing them. And it's like we have that now. We have eternal life abiding within us now. When this body goes back to the dust from which it comes, the spirit and the soul goes and inhabits the new body that is incorruptible and undefiled and is established for us, waiting for us in the heavens. So we have this life, and though we exit this natural realm, we enter into the spirit realm in the kingdom of God, and we reign and we rule for all eternity. But for right now, God's plan is still going forth. And more than likely, many of us will go on to be with the Lord. It's not trying to project something bad or, you know, but how long this stuff is going to last, we don't know. We live, even as those who went before us, we live as though the end of all of this mess is going to be tomorrow. It could be today. It could be the next hour, the next minute, the next moment, at the blinking of the eye. We could be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. However, if it does not happen, we will go on and another generation will come, but the work of God will continue. The message of God will continue. It will not change. It will not alter. It will not uh, try and remake itself. It will not try and fit into the culture. It will remain the same. A thousand years from now, the gospel of Jesus Christ will still be preached to a people who may be dead in trespasses and sins. And God commands them, as he always does and always has, especially since the new covenant was established, but beginning with John the Baptist, commanding people to repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That message will never change. 
So in this day, we had Joshua. Joshua comes into power after Moses goes on. Joshua fulfills his time, and then Joshua goes on. There's some elders that are around him who understood the times and understood how they were to carry and conduct themselves. However, they died, and then you have another generation that comes up that does not know God. But the work of God continues. Because God always has a remnant, even if it's only one. He always has somebody in this earth that believes in him, trusts in him, knows that he'll never change, knows that he's always the same. Jesus Christ the same yesterday and today and forever. They understand that. They grab hold of that. They know that the only, the only way a person can get saved is by repenting of their sins and receiving Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. The only way they're going to get in is that their name is found written in the Lamb's Book of Life. The only way that they're going to get in is that they trust God with their very lives and they live the life of godliness now. They live that life of Christ crucified to the world and the world crucified to them. The work of God continues. It does not stop. It does not change. It does not alter. It does not try to appease to any culture or to any generation. It does not matter. In China, the gospel is still the pure gospel of Jesus Christ. In Russia, the gospel of Jesus Christ is still the same. In Africa, all throughout that great continent, the gospel of Jesus Christ is still the same. It does not change because of the cultural trend. It does not change because of the ethnos. It does not change because of goody two-shoes or being the people of God, it does not change. It is the same everywhere. And it continues. We're carriers now. Carriers of the message. Carriers of the, the, the message of the hope of glory, Jesus Christ himself. Carriers of the truth. Jesus said this, I am the way and the truth and the life, and no man comes unto the Father but by me. That will be the same now as it was in times past, and it always will be until everything is wrapped up. There is no other Savior. There is no other way to God. It doesn't matter what people say, what they think, or what they do. How they act, it does not matter. A generation can be as rebellious as the generation that we face in the church and outside of the church. It is amazing. I was listening to Pastor Rod as he was sharing about things that go on in the body of Christ, things which I won't bring before you right now. But the, the, the stuff that we are confronted with. Even with our own, when I say with our own, I'm talking about our own brothers and sisters in the body of Christ. They live as if they're in the world, but they think that they're saved and they're okay. Some of them are our relatives. Some of them are our closest friends. Some of them aren't our closest friends. Some of them are our adversaries, if you will. We still don't wish them ill or harm. We want them to be saved and not deceived. And so here we are as a people of God, and the struggles that people are dealing with are really not a struggle at all. What do you mean by that? It's not a struggle. It's just you like something that you're doing, and you don't want to give it up. And if you be honest and transparent with yourself, you love that more than you love Jesus. Because when we truly love Jesus, not only does a change and transformation takes place, but we start to bear the image and likeness of him. We start to talk like him, walk like him, act like him. Well, we've never seen him, but his word lives and abides within each and every one of us. He says, if you abide in me and my word abide in you, you will ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Why? Because that word brings us into divine alignment with the one true and living God, and we will, he will withhold no good thing from us because our character and our nature is changed. We're not going to ask him for something that goes contrary to his will. We're not going to get ourselves caught up, into, caught up into something that goes contrary to the will of God. Hallelujah. The work continues. They have to be holy then. We have to be holy now. 
The work continues. It does not get watered down or diluted. That was one of the things that Pastor Rock was talking about, about how they hold fast to, you know, you got you to gotta preach a sermon within like 30 minutes or so and hurry up and get the people out. And he did some stats. And I, you know, he, he is a man of stats. He likes to go into those statistics and all. I just call it like I see it. Hallelujah. Prayerfully, I'm right about it. Don't mind being corrected as long as I'm corrected in the right correction that I'm correct. Amen. Not by somebody's opinion, but by the truth, which makes us all free. And he was talking about how many churches are now, they're, they're in such a hurry to get out of church. Isn't that something? The church doesn't want to even be in church. They've used this pandemic as a reason to stay home and watch it on TV or on their computer. They're more, they fear more this pandemic than they do God. But if you tell them that, you're in for a big argument and you're in for a beatdown, if you will, by what they have to say and what they have to think. Because it's like, hey, yeah, that's just you. That's just how you think. It's like, no, when you look at the dedication and devotion of the people of God who really were the people of God, we pale in comparison to their devotion and dedication. I look and examine myself and how I want to be. I know how I want to be. This is transparent. I know how I want to be with God, but getting there, sometimes there's so many things that interfere, and I don't like it, but I still end up being in that spot. I'm not saying that I'm sinning. It's just I like to sit and watch the Warriors, and as bad as they're playing, they were playing excellent for the first part of the year. They were playing great basketball. Then all of a sudden, sudden, it seemed like all of them hit a slump. And then they're waiting for Clay to get back. Clay comes back. Clay does a little good, but they're still playing lousy. I was so thankful that Milwaukee beat them like they stole something from them. Teach them a lesson not to be cocky or arrogant about themselves and not to take this sport, if they want to win, be the champions again, not to take this lightly, but to be on their A game every time. You think this is about basketball. It's not. It's about the church of the living God. <laughs> so you have to be on your A game every game. And if you're tired, sit down and let somebody else who's got their A game going to go ahead and do this thing while you get whatever rest you think you need. So, again, Milwaukee beat them like they stole something. So then they got mad and talked to themselves and came back and did the same thing to Chicago Bulls. Beat them like they stole something. Why? Because they knew that they were better than what they had been playing. It took an embarrassment like that in order for them to wake up. Church, does God have to expose us on the scene, on a screen, before everyone, before we will wake up to who we are in him and carry about his business because the work of God continues? People who want to get out of church so quick, they really don't have the love that they think they have for Jesus. I know our attention span can only take so much. However, when we're caught up into the presence of God and we're captivated by him, and you know this to be true, when the anointing is strong and you're captivated by the anointing and by the word that is coming forth, Three hours can go by and you won't even recognize it. After it's over, you'll look at the clock and say, wow, where did all of the time go? Because you were caught up. And that's what God wants to get his people to that place of being caught up in him. However, if we're struggling with sin, now when it comes down to it, if God says shut the TV off, I'll shut it off. But he's like, if you want more, you're going to have to sacrifice some of those things you like. You like watching Fox News. It's not so much that I like every person on there. It's just that, one, I like to keep up with things. 
that are going on. And two, there are some, some on there that are very good in what they do. And sometimes here, because we learn by repetition. And so sometimes as we're hearing the, the message or we're hearing what's coming forth, the news itself, by repetition, we're able to retain it better. Which helps us in making decisions, especially in that ballot box. But it, it comes to a place to where you, you have to say, okay, either I love Fox more than I love Jesus, I love the Warriors more than I love Jesus, or I love Jesus more than them. And the proof of that love is in the pursuit of him. Priorities are one thing. Necessities are one thing. One thing, but desires, that's everything. The proof of desire is in the pursuit of the matter. And it's like, son, if you want more of me, then you're going to have to come after me. You're going to have to deny yourself of certain things that you like if you want me to fill that part of you that you believe, not that I must have, but I enjoy having. Why do I say that? Because if I address you on the things that get your attention, you might get upset with me. You might think I'm judging you. So if I use myself as an example and desiring more, and it's not like I haven't increased my time with him. It's not that I've lost interest in him. It's not that I'm so bored with his work that I don't even want to come in to the tabernacle and minister or communicate with his people, even if we're not here, but we're just out there by phone, by text, what have you. That is there. It is real and it is genuine, but I desire more. How about you? Are you really hungry for more of God or are you satisfied with where you are because there is so much more to him? They didn't have all the luxuries that we have today back in the day. And so they spent more time in fellowship in the presence of God. No excuses. Baby died. Not saying anything about anybody. But you read about uh, Mariah. You read about um uh, John G. Lake, they had close loved ones that died, babies, you know, children that died, and they had to bury them, and they did that and kept on preaching. Smith, I think you heard Pastor Lucia say, Smith brought his kids up to the casket where their mother was in that casket and asked them, is she here? They say, no. Okay, let's go. And we probably would think, gosh, how harsh. Give them time to groom, good groom. Give them time to grieve. Give them time to get back. And it's like, you, 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 you have to, you, like an athlete, you have to play when you're hurt. Praise God. You, you have, so as a child of God, you have to, because the word continues, you have to keep working even when you're hurt. Even when you're going through the hard stuff, even when you go through something like COVID, kick COVID in the butt. We got the devil on the run. Let us kick him as he goes and let's worship and praise God. Let's do the work of God. Oh, did you see some of the pictures on yesterday's highlights of, on Facebook of the team that was out there yesterday? It takes nothing away from those who were not out there and who have been out there before. But look at that. They look tough. They look like an army. They look determined. Look at that. God in 2022 is all about you. Jesus, the way, the truth, the life. God so loved the world. Jesus or sin, whom will you serve? Heaven or hell, where will you go? Look at this one here. One nation under God. God, that they're proudly and boldly sporting or holding up faith over fear.
fear. Glory be to God. And they look excited. I can't make out that other one, but something to Jesus looks like that's what it says. But look at how they're up there. Look at Samo in his pose. Look at Princess Sissy. Look at Marcel. Look at Kamaya. Look at Joseph Henry. Look at Kayla Rubin. Look at Sister Tut. Why? I don't know what it is. There's something about you, Sister uh, God. Huh? Tamisha? No, it's not Tamisha. Tiana. She's not even over there. She's in the crowd. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. Because I can, I can call out names, and then when I get to her, I don't think it's anything negative, that's for sure. But Sister Tiana, look at Deaconess Robriel. Look at Elder Finn. Look at Minister Patton. Look at Minister Pat Posada. I don't know why I'm getting those names mixed up. Called a 62 going on 63, I don't know. Look at Minister Killings. Look at Brother Carlitos. Look at Sister Yvonne. And they're just there representing as a, the, 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 the team. And they're like, they don't want to even cancel. They want to go. If the leader's not available, another leader rises up in their place and goes. And to God be the glory for this team. This is not all of them, but to God be the glory for this team because the work continues. Now the leaders battling COVID, we all went through it. Some got impacted more difficulty, difficulty, that's not the right word, more, more, more severe than others. But they said, let's go. Oh, go get the stuff. And they got out there. Why? Because the work continues. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do any of them look sad, sorrowful, depressed, angry, upset, forced, compelled, you know, pushed against their will to go out there. Look at them. They all look excited. And I believe, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but only this one time. I believe they cheered each other up by showing up. I believe they fired one another up. I believe they smiled not because it was photo time, but they were having a good time while they were out there, which has become a common thing now. It has become a norm now. And to God be the glory for that because somebody's got to go because the work continues. It goes outside of these doors and out to the streets where people hang out. And when I saw that one, one nation under God, I was like, wow, praise God. They're buying stuff with their own money, I believe. And putting it together so that they can be more impactful as if they weren't already. But bringing forth the best in evangelizing the city of Antioch. And to God be the glory for that. Amen and amen. Because not many will go. But they will. And we thank the Father for each and every one of them. So the work continues. Okay, give me three minutes. Pastor Ross said they only want to, you know, churches to be in, you know. They even check the time for when they're going to be at the restaurant in between their 30-minute services. And uh, I will share this. He said he went to one church, and they had about three services. Everybody say three. I had to make sure there was three. Uh, and so... Pastor Rod asked him, he said, why do you have three services? Well, because some like their tea time on the golf course, so they want to be out there. 
and then some like to sleep in, so they want to be out there sleeping. And then some just like, you know, choose a different time of service to come in. And so he says, are any of those services full? No. He said, if you combined all three services, would the service be full? He said, no. Then why are you trying to accommodate and appease people? The people are leading the pastors instead of the other way around. The pastors ought to be leading the people only as they are led by the Spirit of God in order to do the work of God. This is no excuse to preach long sermons and things like that or have long services and all. But it's like we're losing it. We're losing it to what? To waste, to garbage, to selfish ambitions and desires. We're losing the most important things that are critical to our walk. We're losing it and letting it go. God spoke to Joshua, Moses is dead. You therefore arise. Why? Because the work continues. I've started something and I intend to finish it. I told Mo, uh, Abraham that his people would go into bondage, into captivity for 400 years. But after that, I would bring them out. And when I bring them out, I will not bring them out empty handed. 430 years to the day, 30 years of them still being there with Joseph. But the other 400 years, which was the sentence that God gave them, 400 years on that final day of the 400 years, God brought them out out and he didn't bring them out to leave them in the wilderness he brought them out to take them into the land that he swore many of you know God is a God of his word the land that he swore to give to Abraham and his descendants and so it's like Moses has been called home his his Leadership days are over, but they're not in the place where God ordained them to be. So God tells Joshua, arise. And so Joshua does, and he begins to take the children of Israel into the land of promise. And little by little, as God told them, they began to occupy and take the land. They conquered uh, Jericho. And then because there was sin in the camp and Achan took what rightfully belonged to God to be destroyed. He took it and hid it in his tents, buried it, and got caught. And him and his family and others who were with him served the punishment. But then they got back on track and began to conquer the land and began to divide the land to the people as God ordained and sanctioned them to. But it didn't stop there because the people after Joshua was gone and the elders with him were gone the generation that came up that didn't know God they got the stuff but they don't know God that's the worst place you can be to be loaded down with stuff and not know God remember what Jesus said in John chapter 17 give me three more minutes and I'm done John chapter 17 verse 17 that one is sanctify them with the truth. Thy word is truth. That's not the one that I want. No. John chapter 17, verse 3. This is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. That's eternal life. So you have a people that grew up that don't know God. Even in this time and day, even in the church of the living God, the body of Christ, we still have those that don't know God. They know about God. They know about church. They know how to do churchy things and all, but they don't know God. Because when you get to know God intimately the way he desires you to know him, nothing else matters. It's all about you. Hallelujah. I give you my life. I give you my all because you gave me your all. Stand to your feet. Everybody say the work continues. And we're doing the work to this very day. Hallelujah. Glory to God. 
Glory to God. Thank you, Master. So much to share in the little time that we have. But we thank you for this time. This is 2022. In Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 8, if you could put that on the screen. We're going to read this together, and this will kind of seal things as far as the direction for this year. On the count of three, let's read together. One, two, three. Better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. And the patient in spirit is better than the proud in spirit. Now, we began this year on a bang and then got hit by something. But that thing had to get the permission of God in order to come. Okay? So it lost. It lost. Even the impacts and the effects of it were not as devastating as before. This is why I said it makes us even more determined now because our God is greater, stronger, mightier, higher than any other. If nothing else, you should see how our God reigns. God has manifested healing within our bodies. Even though it took a week for some, a few days for some, two weeks for some, and for some, it's taking probably a little bit longer or they just don't want to be caught up. But this is the thing about this thing. If you're around those where it originated, once you have it, you can't just keep getting it. That's why I said with the mask thing, it really does us no real good to wear the mask because we already have had it, and we're coming out of it. We can't just give it to, you know, uh, I, I just give it to Michaela. Michaela, give it to me. I give it to Michaela. Michaela, give it to me. No, our body builds up these antibodies and resistance to the thing. Now we just go through the healing process that's not picking on Sister Michaela, so don't nobody go there. Don't put your trust in mass. Don't put your, put your trust in man. Don't put your trust in and any other but the one true and living God. And one thing dad has shown is that his healing power is at work within us. Because if you do watch or pay attention to the news, you'll see that people died even from this variant. People died. One man died waiting on a booster shot that he could not get, which means he's already had the other two shots depending on which one he got. And so he's waiting on a booster shot, and he dies in the process. But you're not dead. I mean, you're dead to sin, but you're alive to God. You're a living, breathing, moving uh, vessel fit for the master's use. You're alive. You're alive. And you're not alive to become a coward. No, dad is saying, no, fear not. Fear not. Fear not. Dad is saying, fear not. Only believe. I received a text from Minister Posada, and I don't mean to spread his business, but he sent me a text of his new truck. It's not a brand new one, but it is in a good condition, and it's going to serve for that second route that he has. I mean, he sent that over. He is living by faith. His business is called Only Believe, and that is what he is actually living. He and his wife, Sister Lauren, they're not the only ones, but it's just when he comes up here before you start sharing things, it's not just him entertaining. It's him by the Spirit of God releasing what God has given him to say to stir up the hearts of his people to believe. Hallelujah. So God brought you through. And if you didn't get it, good. God shielded and protected you. 
But for us who walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we fear no evil. God is with us, and he brings us through. And that makes our faith stronger and not weaker. That makes us more bolder in Jesus' name. I hope you get what I'm saying. Not a beat down. This is a build up. Glory be to God. Be stirred up in your spirit for the things of God. Father, fire us up. Set a fire within us in 2022 that cannot be quenched, cannot be quenched by a pandemic, cannot be quenched by, uh, by the, the words of men or women or whoever who would say things contrary to us or about us, Father. Stir up a fire within us that cannot be quenched by the whims and ways of the world, by the adversary himself. Stir up a fire within us that cannot be quenched, a fire that burns purifies, sanctifies, cleanses, perfects us like gold, perfects us like gold, refined in the fire to where, Lord, even the scum is removed, Father, through the fire of persecution or opposition, the fire of rejection, the fire of anything that would come against us, but the fire that purifies and perfects us, Lord, that we are shining, that our faith is perfected, that our faith is like fine, pure gold for the glory of God. Lord God, in this year that we carry out great exploits, that the blessing and favor of God that is upon us, Lord God, does not decrease, but increases even as we see greater and more manifestations of the spirit of the living God. Lord God, do the supernatural. Do the miraculous, as we were singing about. Do the extraordinary do, Father God, what only you are able to do. And we'll give you all the glory, the honor, and the praise. In Jesus' mighty name, the Lord our God bless you, keep you, make his face shine upon you, be gracious unto you, lift up his countenance on you, and give you his peace. His name be over you, that he may bless you, that you may enjoy the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Above all else, you may prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers, that the gates of hell will never prevail against you. But you will always triumph over the gates of hell because of who you are and whose you are. The church of the living God, the body of Christ. In Jesus' name, be blessed. Remember, there's no prayer tonight. You can pray, but we won't be coming together here in the tabernacle. Uh -huh. And uh, LTJ tomorrow or no LTJ? Oh, no LTJ tomorrow. Well, actually, I think it's today is Martin Luther King's birthday, or was it yesterday? I think it was yesterday, yeah, the 15th. So many people are celebrating that, and to God be the glory. He did a great work while he was here on this earth, but the work continues. Amen? Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, be blessed. We love you so much. Thank you for being here today. Thank you for those watching live stream. Be blessed. If you're not saved, get saved. Repent of your sins. Receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior.